Hello, lovely people. How are you doing today? Uh, hey, you know, if you listened uh, to the uh, addendum uh, to my message this last week, uh, then you probably don't need to listen to this because I'm going to kind of repeat myself. But if you didn't listen to that message, then go ahead and listen to this. All right. And if you listen to this, you can still listen to that message because I say more things there than I say here. Uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, you know, for all those folks out there in Wonderland who are convinced that we need to take America back for God, uh, the good old days when, uh, you know, America was was uh, just for God. Right. And uh, we we're ruled by God and we we're one nation under God. Well, you know, I just remember this. Uh, this is just, I think, uh, a good little message uh, that if you're of white European descent, you stole it. But that wasn't my message for today. Uh, that's just the way the world works. I mean, it's terrible, uh, the conquest of America or whatever, and you can't go back and do, put together scrambled eggs again. But it's just always good to remember that, uh, that America was founded the way nations are always founded, with a lot of barbaric butchery and crap. Okay, so uh, here's a little reflection. I'm going to take a break from my little free will stuff. I'll come back to free will uh, in the next message. But uh, as I was just doing this, Addendum for my the, the sermon. I, there's just something that hit me that I wanted to share with with all you guys. Uh, it comes from the prayer in John 17. Uh, he says, "My prayer is not for them. This is Jesus praying, of course. It's not for them alone. I, I I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I in them and you in me." so that they may be brought to complete unity, referring to his disciples. Then the world will know that you've sent me and have loved them even as you've loved me. So much powerful, beautiful, profound stuff's packed into that prayer. Uh, but I'm just going to say I just, a couple of things here. Um, one is that, you know, the prayer is, well, first of all, I just know Jesus' heart is for not just the, uh, us, his disciples, but for the whole world. Uh, I pray not just for them, but for whoever will believe uh, on me through their message. So he relies on our message for the world to believe, and his heart is for everybody to hear that message. Uh, so just remember that we, we don't exist for ourselves. Uh, we exist uh, uh, for, for, the world, for the world. We're called. We're saved not just for ourselves. We're saved for the world. Uh, we've got uh, to, to be a, a chosen person of God is not just a privilege. It is a vocation. And it's the most important vocation we have. And then Jesus uh, prays that we would be uh, brought to complete unity, uh, that the world may know. It's our, our love that will convince the world that Jesus is for real. And our love, he prays, uh, is, is to be a love that mirrors the triune God. I pray that they may be one even as we are one. So we're supposed to love uh, with a love that reflects who God is. And that is what will convince folks that's one of the ways that the world will be convinced that uh, this message that we have is for real. And so he wants our love to mirror the love of the triune God. In fact, he wants our love to participate in the love of the triune God. So he says he prays that we would be one, uh, even as he and the Father are one, uh, us in them and they in us. Okay, There's this interpenetration going on. It's just beautiful. We're to participate in his love. That's why he prays that we would uh, know that we are loved with the same love the Father has for him. The same love, the love of the triune God. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 1, 6 that we are loved in the beloved. Uh, we're in Christ. And so as the Father loves Christ, the Father loves us. It's not a second love. Uh, it's, not a, it's the same act of loving Christ uh, includes us because we are incorporated into Christ. And this is just the most beautiful part of the good news. Uh, God's plan of salvation is to envelop us in his triune love so that we are participants of the divine nature, uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 4, or is it 2 Peter 1, 4? One of the two. Uh, we're participants in the divine nature. Throughout eternity, we'll be sharing in the, the joy and the bliss we, uh, of God. He doesn't give us leftovers. He gives us himself. God's plan of salvation is to reach out and grab us and bring us right into the heart of that triune dance. And then here's something that I, I just, just love. Note this, that... For that to happen, God went to the furthest extremity out of himself as you could possibly go. He became a human being, crossed an infinite distance to become a human being uh, in Jesus Christ. He's fully God and fully human. And then he went even further, and on the cross, he took on, entered into solidarity with our sin and with our curse, the judgment for that sin, which is God forsakenness. The ultimate judgment of sin is, is to be separated from God. Um, and so Jesus enters into that God forsakenness. He takes on our disunity from God. Why? In order that we can participate in the unity of God. 
Um, ah, this is wonderful. He enters into our forsakenness that we can enter into his perfect unity. Uh, and he expresses his, the infinite perfection of his love by the infinite distance he was willing to cross to love us. Uh, he, he goes as far away from himself as he could possibly go. God couldn't get farther away from himself than becoming his antithesis, which, which is what he does on the cross. And he does all of that so that we, we, we get to a point where we couldn't get closer to him. He goes as far from himself as he could go to bring us as close to himself as we could possibly go. Ha! It's really, it, 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 people, no one could ever make this up. This is too beautiful for a human mind and too crazy for a human mind just to invent. Uh, it's the beauty of God. So uh, chew on that, savor that. You are right now, whether you feel it or not, you are in the heart of the triune God. Enjoy that. Maybe the rest of your life just sucks, but you got one thing going for you, and that trumps everything else, and that is that you are enveloped in the heart of the triune God. All right. God bless you guys. Smile. Love people. See you later.